On July 8th, SpaceX quietly launched 28 additional Starlink satellites from Cape Canaveral, intensifying speculation that Elon Musk is building more than just an internet network. Could this be the missing piece for Tesla's long-rumored Pi tablet? For millions of people, carrying the burden of around $100 per month for data plans on just a single device, combined with unreliable Wi-Fi, a truly global satellite-powered tablet like the Pi tablet could be a game-changer. According to EcoFlow, a leader in renewable and mobile energy solutions, Starlink's low-latency network is now fast enough to compete with traditional ground carriers. And in just a moment, we'll reveal the Pi tablet feature that could leave Apple and legacy telecoms scrambling. But first, make sure to subscribe to Auto Gear Shift. We're just 3,799 subscribers away from our next milestone, and hit the bell so you don't miss a single update. 1. How did satellite internet technology shrink from rooftop dishes to a chip inside your PI tablet? Within just six years, SpaceX has evolved its satellite internet platform across three distinct generations, each generation significantly reducing size, power requirements, and increasing integration capability. The first generation, Starlink Gen 1, introduced in 2019, deployed phased array antenna technology through a large 60-centimeter circular dish weighing approximately 4.5 kilograms. This system required 100 watts of continuous power, typically supplied through external AC adapters. Operating in the Q-band frequency range from 10.7 to 12.7 gigahertz for downlink and 14.0 to 14.5 gigahertz for uplink, it provided peak speeds between 50 to 150 megabits per second, with latency averaging around 30 to 60 milliseconds. Installation involved motorized mount calibration and GPS-assisted orientation to lock onto satellite constellations, making it suitable only for fixed residential or commercial use cases. By 2024, Starlink Mini brought substantial improvements. The antenna size was reduced to 30 centimeters in width, with total weight dropping below 1.8 kilograms. Its power consumption decreased to 25 watts, thanks to advances in GAN-based power amplifiers and software-optimized beam steering. Starlink Mini retained Q-band operation but introduced dynamic frequency hopping, improving reliability in congested areas. However, while it offered portability, Starlink Mini still required manual setup using a companion app to find optimal orientation. In 2025, Starlink Nano marks a new era with its ultra-compact design. Measuring just 5 mm by 5 mm and 0.7 mm thick, this single chip integrates a phased array transceiver, digital signal processor, and GNSS positioning module. Operating in the K-band frequency range from 24.25 to 29.5 GHz, it delivers downlink speeds of 150 to 300 megabits per second, uplink speeds up to 80 megabits per second, and latency as low as 18 milliseconds under clear sky conditions. Built using a 3 nanometer three-dimensional stacked semiconductor process, Starlink Nano consumes only 2 watts of power. It features automatic beamforming and GPS synchronization directly on chip, requiring no external setup. Once the device powers on, it connects automatically and maintains stable performance even while moving at speeds up to 100 kilometers per hour. Are you impressed by how Starlink shrank in size while boosting performance? Comment, Starlink Nano, if that's a yes. 2. How did the Pi Tablet become the first device built to harness Starlink Nano's full satellite power? The Pi Tablet is the first device specifically designed to integrate Starlink Nano technology. Its 12.7-inch chassis provides space for the 5mm by 5mm phased array antenna system and supporting circuit. The Pi Tablet powers this system with a 20,000 mAh lithium-silicon battery delivering 5 volts at 2 amps, enough for Starlink Nano's 2-watt continuous power draw while running the tablet's core functions. Alongside the antenna array operates the Tesla T1 Neural Processing Unit, 
a dedicated signal processor custom-built for Starlink Nano's adaptive beamforming tasks. Manufactured using Samsung's 3 nanometer extreme ultraviolet lithography process, the T1NPU contains over 12 billion transistors in a package size no larger than 4 millimeters by 4 millimeters. This chip is specifically tuned to process satellite signal phase adjustments in real time, allowing it to manage up to 128 simultaneous satellite links. Integrating such a complex system requires very specific design considerations that only the Pi tablet has been engineered to support. One critical requirement is the ground plane for antenna reflection. The Pi tablet features a rear housing made from 7000 series aluminum alloy shaped to create an optimized electromagnetic ground plane that enhances phased array performance by up to 18% compared to standard tablet shells. Chip placement is another key factor. The Starlink Nano module is installed exactly 15 millimeters inward from the upper right corner of the device, a position carefully chosen through electromagnetic simulation studies to avoid signal interference caused by hand placement when holding the tablet. Additionally, the module is enclosed within a layer of mu metal shielding, a specialized nickel iron alloy that blocks magnetic fields from the tablet's screen and internal circuitry. This prevents signal degradation caused by electromagnetic interference from the high refresh rate OLED display. Thermal management is a key challenge when integrating Starlink Nano into the Pi tablet, given the chip's compact size and high performance. To handle this, Starlink Nano uses liquid metal cooling channels filled with gallium indium alloy, carved directly into its substrate at just 0.1 millimeters wide. This alloy provides thermal conductivity up to 40 watts per meter, Kelvin about 10 times higher than standard thermal paste, keeping chip temperatures below 60 degrees Celsius even at full load. The Pi tablet enhances this system by linking the cooling channels to its internal heat pipe array, which connects to the aerospace-grade aluminum frame. This setup distributes heat evenly across the chassis, ensuring stable satellite performance while maintaining user comfort and device durability. Did you expect a tablet could pack this much satellite power and precision design? Comment Pi tablet if that surprises you. 3. How does this Pi tablet unlock a trillion-dollar satellite internet future? Tesla sells the Pi tablet for exactly $179, matching its production cost without profit. A clear cost breakdown shows the 11-inch OLED display at $90, the Tesla T1 Neural Processing Unit for Starlink Nano at $45, the 20,000 mAh lithium silicon battery at $25, and the aerospace-grade aluminum chassis at $19. This pricing confirms Tesla's strategy. Prioritize widespread adoption of Starlink Nano rather than earning margins from the device itself. Tesla's real revenue comes from Starlink Nano's subscription service, priced at $50 per month. This service offers unlimited global satellite internet with speeds between 150 to 300 megabits per second, and latency as low as 18 milliseconds. Unlike older satellite internet models, which often charge around $599 for hardware like the original Starlink dish, the Pi tablet requires no additional equipment or setup fees. Users simply power on the tablet and instant satellite connectivity begins, making high-speed internet accessible to a wider audience. Moreover, the Pi tablet is able to function as a satellite Wi-Fi hotspot. Using Wi-Fi 6E, one Pi tablet can share its Starlink Nano connection with up to 32 devices simultaneously, turning it into a household internet hub. Families can connect smartphones, laptops, smart TVs, and more through a single tablet without paying extra. Whether at home or traveling, users effectively carry a personal global Wi-Fi hotspot wherever they go. This model has major economic and regulatory implications in the United States. Telecom giants like Verizon and AT&T currently charging $75 to $80 per month for mobile data, risk losing up to 60% of their customers as people switch to Starlink Nano. 
rural communities, where residents often pay over $100 monthly for slow, unreliable service, could see substantial benefits in both speed and affordability. With service speeds exceeding the Federal Communications Commission's 25 megabits per second broadband standard, Starlink Nano qualifies for rural broadband subsidies, positioning Tesla as both a market disruptor and a potential beneficiary of public infrastructure programs. So as SpaceX expands its Starlink constellation, the Pi tablet emerges not just as another device, but as a symbol of a global shift in connectivity. No more paying $100 a month for spotty service tied to a single device. With Starlink Nano inside, the Pi tablet could finally deliver internet freedom anywhere on Earth. The question now isn't if, but when you'll make the switch.